You go from this very successful financial career into this world you just described, but even backing up in the early where you're like got this box of knives and you're going from door to door. How did you stay humble the whole way through? There's a lot of people that have a hard time going from working at a big company with benefits and prestige and that, you know, that polish and then going into being this guy's like, look, I just literally need to drive my pickup truck door to door and figure out who will say yes to me. How did you stay humble during that whole process? Gosh, you know, well, uh, first and foremost, out of necessity, really and truly. Um, but I, th I think, and and I don't want this to come come across as as any any braggadocious or anything, but I think there was there was this aura that probably was felt about me because I was so at peace with what I was doing. I was finally doing something that I that I was passionate about, extremely passionate about. And anybody that would give me two minutes of their time to talk about it, I think they could quickly see how passionate about it I was. And and um, you know, so and and I and I remembered, you know, my dad told me, you know, one time this was this was when I was still in the financial business. He said, you know, you get you got to. You gotta you gotta keep a balance between your your current customer base and and your opportunities you're seeking, right? Because your customers are your customers, right? They're the guys who are they're the guys who are with you. They're, they, they, these other folks are not your customers yet. You, you know, you, naturally you've got to go out there and procure, but you can't lose sight of that, right? And so, so I, I took that and kind of flipped it around and thought about these people that I was approaching with my product, right? And trying to tell my story and, and, and promising them, you know, look, I'm, I, I will, I, anything you need for me. I mean, I can remember going in to some and, and they would talk about pricing and, and I, I would literally, I would literally sit there and say, Hey, look, tell me what will make it work for you. <laughs> I just want a shot, you know, tell me what it will make for you. Probably not the best business model. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. but, it, but, it, but it very, it, I built relationships, you know, that way. And, um, and so through that process of, of going through, I mean, you know, I had already been beaten up enough by, by my community of, of friends and, and family for, for making this wild decision to jump off and do this. So, so, so all the pride had been beaten out of me at this point in time. Um, but I was very, I was, I was very, I took great pride in what I was doing. And I think that that resonated out of me. Um, I can remember my mother telling me, you know, she, she, she was probably the one that lost the most sleep over it when, when I, when I took the jump, but I can remember her, you know, finally looking at me and, and saying, gosh, I, you I'm looking at my son doing what he's supposed to be doing. And um, I think that resonated when I was out with people and, and I was having fun, you know, I, I was having fun. It was stressful. It was hard. It was a change. It was a dramatic, dr you know, dr dramatic pay cut, et cetera. Um, but I was having fun. And, um, and, and, and we could get more into that later because I think that's a whole nother part of it. But, it, you know, I think all of those things together just, just kept me, kept me humble and, and focused, you know, it was very focused, had to be very focused, um, yeah. more, always, more, so, more so than I ever had been in my, in my professional career, really, because it, you know, every cell could be your last. Right. And, yeah. and, I, and there were, there was there wasn't a fallback. There was no team. There was no other guys out there, you know, supporting the, the revenue stream. It was just me. And, um, so yeah, that was an interest, a very interesting time in my life. I learned more life lessons during that, but I had, I took away so much just gratification and pride and, 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 and really at the end of the day, it was kind of like, man, I've worked my tail off for something that I, that nobody thought would work. Yeah. And I'm not saying at this point it's working, but it's working better than they thought it was going to work. And, and, and there was, you know, that, that, that helped. How have you maintained yeah, one of the things that struck me about your company that uh, and just just everything you guys from the products to just even, you know, as you even follow just kind of the things you guys are up to and what you guys are doing and how you're doing it. It seems like you've figured out how to permeate that to the rest of your organization. How do you keep that alive? It seems like that scrappy, humble, 
just kind of passion driven spirit that you did in the early days seems to just continue to push its way into this world. Now, maybe it's because it's the outdoor community and a lot of it is just kind of in that DNA of people anyways, but how have you been able to continue doing that with your culture within the business? Gosh, you know, it's, you know, I've been very, very fortunate to have to surround myself with people who are passionate about the outdoors, who are passionate about, you know, the culinary scene. A lot of our, our products are culinary driven, who are, who are passionate about, the artisan of, of the process, um, you know, for, for a long, long, a, a very long time, people would, you said it earlier in, in the intro, talking about how, you know, these things are almost too, they're so too nice to use kind of thing. And, and I would get that all the time and, and, and not glorifying what we're doing, but we, you know, we, we, we were making really pretty product, really nice products. And they would, you know, I would get the, you're an artist and these are, these are too nice to use kind of thing. And I'd say, well, you know, a, I, I, it's hard for me to take the artist title, um, and B, you know, making them making them functional is the hard part. B, making them making them pretty is the easy part. And so I found a lot of people that understood that. You know, I found a lot of guys. Um, you know, there there was some good fortune out of misfortune in a time where when all of this was going on, there was a lot of change in the economy. There were a lot of really good craftsmen that were. Um, in the home building space and the fine cabinetry types type space, you know, really, really precise craftsmen, right? It's hard to teach people. It's like I, people say it all the time. Like Chris, you're so OCD. You're so, you're so like attention to detail, et cetera. And, and I, you can't teach somebody that. And, and I've been very fortunate to find those kind of, that, that those kind of people. And, um, and so, and I think in and of itself, you know, the concept of, hey, man, working for a knife company, that's pretty cool. You know, that's, that's got some cool factor about it. Right. So it's right. It, it's it, we I've been very lucky to to surround myself with with a group of folks that that have all of these qualities, um, all completely different and very unique people, but all kind of have those core, you know, qualities and values and and take pride Um you know, in, in the product. And, and, and when you surround yourself with those kind of people and, and you get everybody to buy in, right. That's the thing. It's the teamwork, right. If you can get everybody to buy into the, to the team, um, that then everybody's skills and their talents just exponentially grow. They just exponentially, you know, present themselves in the product, in our customer service, in our, you know, interaction with our clients in, in what we're doing out there to promote the products, et cetera. And so, um, so yeah, so I've been real lucky. I've been, I've been real lucky to get some great people and, um, you know, and there's not a day goes by that I, that I don't think to myself and, you know, count my blessings and, and send prayers up for, for, for each and every one of these folks that are in there that are helping me, chase this crazy dream of mine right um but who also dream the same dream 